Tonight, we find out about a homicide in Colfax. And how WSU's engineering department plans to develop new hands-on learning. And the city of Pullman continues to grow. One idea the city may use to address the problems that come with downtown congestion. Murrow News 8 starts now. From Studio B on the campus of Washington State University, this is Pullman's only nightly newscast. This is Murrow News 8. Good evening, I'm Emma Jerome. And I'm Matt King. Welcome to Murrow News 8. A homeless woman appeared in court today after the Whitman County Sheriff's Office found a dead body in Colfax on Friday night. Murrow News 8 reporter Jasmine Durachi explains what happened and what the Sheriff's Office, know, Sheriff's Office knows so far about the suspect. Jasmine? Thanks so much, Emma. Well, deputies found the man, later identified as 55-year-old Kenneth Allen of Coeur d'Alene, dead in his car on Colfax Airport Road near the intersection of State Route 26. Deputies responded to a report of a homeless woman waving a firearm at the vehicle on the side of the road. When law enforcement arrived at the scene, they found 33-year-old Ashley Myers carrying a bat. Myers, as well as um, the decedent in this case, uh, had been traveling together for some time. Uh, we don't know the extent of the relationship, but we believe it was a relationship that they had had on, for only a short period of time. traveling together for an unknown period of time and after further questioning Myers allegedly revealed to deputies that the shot that she shot Allen intentionally. Deputies found a loaded handgun they believe the suspect used and a substantial quantity of methamphetamines outside the vehicle. Ashley Myers appeared in court earlier today for a preliminary hearing where the judge set her bail at one million dollars. She will appear in court again this Friday. Reporting live from Studio B, I'm Jasmine Duracci, Murrow News 8. The ASWSU Executive Branch held a Q&A for students, allowing them to ask questions both in person and via social media of student body president Savannah Rogers and B Vice President Tyler Parcham. Rogers touched on a few projects she hopes to work on, including securing students during an active shooter situations, funding mental health resources, and preventing sexual assault. Rogers stressed that students can make a difference. WSU constantly strives to make an impact in our community. I caught up with some WSU researchers to learn about how they look to make learning easier for students. WSU researchers always continue to look for ways to not only improve our community, but also improve our world as a whole. These engineering researchers, led by Bernie Van Wee, found that students learn better with a hands-on approach and look to develop more of those opportunities for students. And we do see improvements, especially at the higher order levels of learning. The team designed their first model which helped to show visually how concepts like heat flow work so students can actually see the concept rather than just hearing about it. Here is the hot water and here is the cold water. So what a student will do first, they will measure the temperature, what is hot and record it. Then at the same time they will start both of the pump at the same time. So they will start this and it's flowing toward the pipe. So hot fluid actually goes toward the pipe and follow this path and the cold fluid actually go through the outside pipe and it's the it, it comes to this. Cost played a critical role in the development of these modules. The team wanted to make these models as cost friendly as possible so other universities could easily make them. We're talking right now about $125 per setup, $500 for a set of, of four. We want to get that cost down even further. The main goal for this team, however, remains to make the lives of students easier. We need to continue to think about how we can get our students more engaged in the classroom, and the desktop learning modules uh, will help us do just that. 46 other universities agreed to utilize these models for their students. WSU Director for the Center of Reproductive Biology, John Oatley, says that researchers on campus may have found a way to combat food insecurity. Gene editing technology already used in China continues to, to gain attention amongst doctors and animal researchers as a way to combat certain diseases and create more productive food animals by decreasing disease risk. The Washington State University Indian, so uh, Indian Student Association created a new logo. To better represent themselves, they realized the logo didn't represent the Indian culture when making a flyer for their upcoming event, Indian Night. 
The font combines Hindi and English inspiration and the colors are from Holi, the Festival of Colors. The group will hold Indian Night on November 3rd at the Gladish Community and Cultural Center. I have never been to Indian Night. Have you been before? I've never been, but I definitely have. I should definitely check it out now. I'm yeah, interested. I think I will too. When we come back, find out how the city of Pullman could potentially deal with growth. And why the prices of soda might go up in the state of Washington when Murrow News 8 continues. Last summer, my new dad took me on vacation. <laughs> First, we went uh, deep sea fishing. Wow! I'm so proud of you, son. And then we went on Thundershark. That was awesome! Let's go again! Three times. <laughs> I gotta say, it was pretty cool. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. Thousands of kids in foster care will take you just as you are. Oh, not again. If you want to be a parent, it doesn't matter how you play, what you wear, how you dance, or even what direction life takes you. You just need to be there. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. Thousands of teens in foster care don't need perfection. They just need you. The Pullman Chamber of Commerce and the Kiwanis Club look for new ways to grow the city of Pullman. People like to think of Pull Pullman as a small town, but the population continues to grow. Bishop Boulevard may need to expand because it can't have handle heavy traffic. Pullman Transit has grown, but college students use it more than Pullman residents. The South Bypass would take the heavy traffic off of Bishop Boulevard, which hasn't been engineered for um, that kind of traffic. So to just remove it from the south end of town um, to cut across over to Moscow without having to come through Bishop Boulevard or Main Street. Maria Dimkowski, executive director of the Pullman Chamber of Commerce, says the community has wanted a bypass, but legislators have not taken any action on it. With the midterm elections rapidly approaching, voters get to decide on more than just who represents them. Dax McCoy investigates Initiative 1634 and how it might make your party cost a little more. A battle going on in your grocery cart. I-1634, the grocery tax initiative, will give voters the ability to choose whether or not local governments have the option to put additional tax on sugary drinks this November. It's not the same as taxing basic food. It's not, you're not taxing, you're not taxing uh, noodles, you're not taxing meat, you're not tax. Uh, so soda's a little bit different in that regard. So I'd be open to the idea of at least reaching out resident to residents. The Yes to Affordable Groceries campaign has raised about $13 million from soda corporations like Pepsi, Coca-Cola, and Dr. Pepper to get this initiative passed. Owners of small businesses like Dismore's back the Yes campaign, arguing taxes shouldn't get raised on poorer earners. Like Seattle, you know, tax this, sugary drinks, I think it's just the start, and then it opens it to everyone, the tax to start taxing all kinds of aspects of all types of groceries. The new taxes, if implemented, could raise the prices of soda, which disproportionately affects people of lower incomes. At a time when half of workers in Pullman qualify for subsidized housing, raising the price on something as common as soda could make for a tough sell. But with a third of Americans suffering from obesity, and today's children representing the most overweight generation in U.S. history, some pediatricians feel they must fight back against soda corporations to help children avoid unhealthy outcomes, including diabetes. The Pullman City Council has not discussed any such additional taxes on food or sugary drinks, but some will consider it if I-1634 doesn't pass. In Pullman, Dax McCoy, Murrow News 8. Closer to home, crime and vandalism forced Olathe County Company to close their doors. An invalid date hunting permits on their land Bennett Lumber closed off their property to the public after several cases of vandalism. Property owners also discovered someone slaughtered three of their cows. The property north of State Highway 8 between Troy and Deary remains closed until further notice. Next, we check, check in with Dax McCoy in the Weather Center. And later, find out about a unique protest in Spokane when Murrow News 8 returns. Can you help me with this? My new dad teaches me all kinds of stuff. Hmm. Sure. He helps me with homework. That would be 3.6795. Thanks. Yep. 
He helps me with my decision making. I wouldn't use this one. Ever. And he's even teaching me how to drive. And that's why cars have bumpers. I'm learning so much. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. Thousands of kids in foster care will take you just as you are. When you're out there, there's no telling what you'll find. I see it, I see it! Oh, look at you. There are some moments only the forest can inspire. Find yours at discovertheforest.org. We can finally say goodbye to summer because those fall temperatures have started to show up. I saw a lot of jackets on my way to campus today. Let's check with Dax in the Weather Center. Dax, what do you think about the colder temperatures? Yeah, that's right, guys. So we saw some warmer temperatures today um, over the weekend, not so much, though. But yeah, as we're looking at today, we're looking at 71 of a high. So we were really thinking about, as you said earlier, we saw some people wearing jackets. I saw people wearing sweatshirts and sweatpants, North Face jackets, all kinds of stuff like that. It's really that time of year, and we're going to unfortunately be seeing something, the R word, actually, in fact. We're going to be seeing that. And if you're not ready for that, well, you're just going to have to get used to it. Anyways, as we look at the east side of the state, we're looking at Spokane at 68, Pullman 71. Again, both these states are covered with clouds. We had a little bit of low pressure, and we're going to see more low pressure throughout the week. Uh, in Wenatchee, Yakima, again, more cloud cover. Yakima, a little less. And then on the east side, we literally saw rain. We saw rain. And unfortunately, guys, we're going to see rain tomorrow as well. Rain is about a 70% about chance we're going to see rain anyway. So there is a chance that we might miss out on it, but unlikely. So in the morning, we'll start a little colder. Of course, as we we'll get towards the evening, we'll get a little bit warmer, but we'll top out about in the high 60s. Towards the, rest of the, towards the rest of the week, we're going to be looking at uh, the mid-50s, so mid-range temperatures all the way around. Guys, back to you at the desk. Mike Pence will visit Spokane on Tuesday. Find out how the Backbone campaign will protest his visit. Stay tuned. <laughs> Mom, can we get some ice cream? Please, Mom, please. No, we're having dinner yeah. soon. Please. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. There are thousands of children in foster care who will take you just as you are. Smallest moments can have the biggest impact on a child's life. Take time to be a dad today. The Backbone Campaign, an activist group that uses art to make political statements, will fly a 20-foot baby Trump balloon in Spokane on Tuesday during Vice President Mike Pence's visit. The Backbone Campaign collaborates with Indivisible Spokane and hopes to get it as close as possible to Pence when he headlines an event in support of re-electing U.S. Representative Kathy McMorris Rogers. The balloon replicates the original that flew in London when President Trump visited in July. I think I would go all the way to Spokane just to see how much helium they can fit in that thing. I want to know how close they're going to get it to them if they say that's their goal. Well, you know, um, it's a really clever idea, and I think it's really cute. Over under 20 feet? I don't know. Uh, we'll find out, that's for sure. <laughs> Thank you for watching tonight. Join us every weeknight at 7 and 10 for Pullman's only nightly newscast. Have a great evening and don't forget to follow Murrow News 8 on Facebook and Twitter. Good night, Pullman. This is going to be a good time. Yeah, that's right. This is everyone here. <laughs> what?